This is the first time in Microsoft Flight Simulator you get to fly on a planet other than Earth. Arrakis has been added into Microsoft Flight Simulator as a part of the latest free DLC called Dune. Of course, this is based on the movie and includes the iconic aircraft, the Ornithopter. Now, much like the Top Gun Maverick DLC that come before it, the Dune mission, the Dune expansion, contains a section of tutorials here as well as a bunch of different missions. The tutorials will get you to grips with the aircraft and this is probably well worth doing because it's totally unlike any other aircraft in the game currently. Obviously, this is a completely sci-fi ship. Sure, it's not the only sci-fi ship available in Flight Simulator. We do have the Halo Pelican, but this one is, well, it doesn't exactly fly like an airplane. But that said, it does share some similarities at least with a helicopter. So, of course, you can fly the Ornithopter from inside the cockpit, and it does have a uh, interactable cockpit here. The, uh, the all, all the functions do seem to be working and accounted for. But as good as flying inside the cockpit actually is, and I'm very much a fan of this type of interaction because, after all, this is a sim, I did really enjoy using the external camera when it comes to the Ornithopter. It may be just down to the design of the craft itself, not to mention these great-looking wings and all that functionality there, but yeah, this all felt really, really cinematic to me. Now to start off the aircraft to get the Ornithopter in motion, you do want to fold, fold out the wings, and once you've done that, you'll need to power them up. Somewhat similar to a helicopter, you can tip the nose forward or tip it down and the Ornithopter will start to move forwards. Unlike a helicopter, however, this does come with an afterburner and it moves at very, very high speeds. Just as in the movie, there's some fantastic manoeuvres you can do, which include folding in the wings and dropping down at a fantastically high speed, and then folding out the wings again at the last moment to then fly along the floor, fly along the grounds at very low altitudes. The tutorials get you to grips with all of this, so there's not really any problems there. Now, as you will have immediately noticed, and as I mentioned in the opening segments of this video, this is not at all set on Earth. This is, in fact, set on the planet of Arrakis. And yes, that is a desert world. Now, to be perfectly clear here, it doesn't feature the entire world of Arrakis. This is uh, fixed maps. But there are a selection of different maps and areas you can fly around. And fans of the movies, as well as the books, will likely recognise some of these locations. As far as I could tell, though, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any free fly around Arrakis. That's something I would really, really like to see. Of course, though, you can fly the Ornithopter back on Earth at any location. Now, the really neat thing about the Dune DLC is that, well, it comes with a bunch of different activities. And one of these is very spectacular because it features a desert storm, otherwise known in the terminology of Dune as a Coriolis storm. These are massive, massive sandstorms with winds of up to 800 miles per hour or kilometers an hour, I can't remember which, but very high speed and yes, extremely deadly. You won't be flying through these. One of the missions then sets you the task of rescuing a crashed pilot. You have to head out into the desert and rescue the pilot before the sandstorm arrives. And yes, you can see the sandstorm. It actually looks really good. And you'll have seen some of that in the footage that's playing on the screen as I talk. Another mission lets you do some time trial racing through some really great looking canyons. The Ornithopter is well designed for this type of flight, and it's not just a straightforward race. You actually have to land at multiple times along the race. There'll be three landing pads, and you'll have to land on each one of them in turn before taking off and flying to the next one. Now, the Ornithopter itself seems to be a very, very accurate, highly detailed one-to-one -one replica of the Ornithopter from the movies. Personally, for me, as a fan of the movies, but more so as a fan of the books, I've read these, well, 30, 35 years ago, yeah, it's really nice to be able to get to grips with the Ornithopter and actually try it out and fly it for myself. But all that said, as you can probably tell from some of the footage here, I'm not an expert pilot by any means when it comes to the Ornithopter. Whilst Microsoft were great enough to let me have early access to this so I could get some hands-on experience with it before it released, unfortunately, due to a variety of reasons, I was only able to get hands-on experience with it for a few hours as of this recording, but that was more than enough to know that this DLC is well worth trying out. Overall then, the only real disappointment to this is there's no sign whatsoever of any sandworms anywhere. That would have been really nice to see, but I can completely understand why they're not there. Something you will see though are the spice harvesters. These are scattered around through some of the different activities. If you want to check out the Dune DLC then, 
You can find it through the InSim Marketplace and it's around about a four to five gigabyte download. Now, hopefully for all of you, that's going to be a smooth download and it's going to happen very speedily. But sometimes both the uh, updates for the sim as well as some of the content from the in the sim marketplace can take a fair bit of time to actually get hold of. Either way, to give this a shot, it's completely free and available right now. Also, why not check out some of the other videos on the screen right here?